As President of the European Union, what, Madam, are your priorities for Europe at the moment? First of all, we think that employment has to be the first priority because there are so many people, 18 million people in Europe, that do not have an employment. So this is a first priority. Then, of course, uh, we also want the Union to be enlarged by our neighbors, Middle and Eastern European countries, but also by those countries that had a decision before, like, for instance, Cyprus. Here you were President of Europe with your whole agenda and architecture and so on. And now you've got your friend Milosevic creating this theater next door in uh, the Balkans. Has it been a distraction? Well, Milosevic has lied to us very often, but therefore we have to answer with strength and with firmness. And I think the international community now did so, as finally the community also acted in Bosnia-Herzegovina. It seems that it is the only language that he understands. But what has Europe done? Europe has been completely left out of the Balkans. I mean, it's Richard Holbrook, President Clinton's envoy, who has sorted things out. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't think it was completely left out of the game, although the Americans have done quite a lot. But we have the so-called contact group. This is the group where the European Union also, through its presidency, is there and present. And then, of course, there are the American allies, but there, are, there is also Russia. And also Russia is an important factor to be able to solve this problem. So with a common position coming from the European Union that the presidency could bring into the contact group and together with the Americans and together with the others, we tried to find a common ground. Now that Euro is being introduced on the 1st of January 1999, what plans do you have? What exactly is going to happen? Uh, on the 1st of January, it's only the so-called book money, the money in the books that will change to euro. But this, finally, in Europe, I think the population has understood. But it was important to change here in the minds, because it was difficult for many people to suddenly uh, cede their own money to a European money. Is euro going to be of huge advantage to countries like India? I think in a very positive way. Uh, and I must tell you that I once held a speech in India before uh, the Chamber of uh, Industrialists and Entrepreneurs on that subject. I think with a new currency coming in, where you can also bill in a new currency, there will be a greater stability zone also coming towards Asia, and especially also towards India. I think the stability that we have now can be exported also to another bilateral, but also to another multilateral partner. So what is on the agenda in New Delhi when you come there, madam? There are very important issues that we will have to tackle there, like, for instance, the question of the nuclear tests. You know that uh, in the past, uh, the nuclear tests of India and of Pakistan have, of course, uh, uh, produced some turmoil in the international community and it is very important that we start talking how we can come down, how India uh, could uh, then, of course followed by Pakistan, then also sign the NPT and the CTBTO treaty, which we think are crucial. Of course we will have a political dialogue where we will also discuss questions that are burning for India at this moment and for Pakistan, like the Kashmir conflict. There has been very slow progress on Kashmir for a variety of reasons. What is your reading? I do not want to interfere there at all. The only thing is that if a mediator were uh, asked for by you, we would be very happy to do so, because we think there are possible alternatives, possible solutions, and whatever we can do to assist you there. Uh, would be uh, within our margin of trying to prevent conflicts or where there are conflicts, try to mitigate them and bring them down. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you.